In this video, we'll create ASP.NET Core Web API with JWT authentication from scratch. So, let's start. Open Visual Studio. Click on Create New Project. Then select ASP.NET Core Web API, and click Next. Type the project name and click Next. Here, leave everything as it is, and click Next. First, delete these files. Now, open NuGet Package Manager to install few packages. First, search for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity.Entity Framework Core and install it. Then, search for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.OpenAPI and install it. Then search for Microsoft Entity Framework Core and install it. Also install Microsoft Entity Framework Core.Design. Then install Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. Then install Microsoft Entity Framework Core.Tools. Now search for Microsoft.VisualStudio.Web.CodeGenerator.Design and install it. Now search for Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Authentication.JWT Bearer and install it. All of required packages are installed now. Now, create a folder and name it, Models. Create another folder and name it, Data. Inside Models folder, create a class named, Blogs. Inside this class, create a key annotation and also import its library. Create a property of int type named blog ID. Use required annotation. Create a property of string type named blog title and initialize it with empty string. Use required annotation again. Create a property of string type named blog description and initialize it with empty string too. Use required annotation again. Create a property of string type named blog author and also initialize it with empty string. We can convert use lowercase string instead of this, so let me convert these. With this model class is complete. Inside data folder, create a class named appdb context. Inherit this class from identity db context and pass identity user model to it and import its library too. Now create constructor of this class with options. Now create a property of type db set and pass blogs model to it and name it blogs. With this, our app DB context class is complete. Now open program.cs file. Above build method, use builder.services.add db context method and pass it our app db context class. Now use options, then use SQL server method and pass it builder.configuration.get connection string method and pass it name of connection string. Now copy this connection string. It will be available in the description. Open app settings file and paste it here. Open SQL Server Management Studio and copy the server's name and paste it here in front of server. Also pass it the database name to create.
Now use builder.services.add authentication method and pass it JWT bearer defaults.authentication scheme. Then use add JWT bearer method and use lambda expression. Inside it, use token validation parameters and initialize it with new token validation parameters and import its library. And inside it, set validate issuer to true, validate audience to false, validate lifetime to true, validate issuer signing key to true. Use valid issuer and pass it a string. Use issuer signing key. But come up here and create a byte array named secret bytes and initialize it with new byte array of 64. Now create using method and inside it, create random variable and initialize it with random number generator dot create method. Now use random.getBytes method and pass it secret bytes. Now create a string property named secret key, initialize it with convert.toBase64 string method and pass it secret bytes. Now scroll down and pass new symmetric security key method and then pass it encoding.utf8.getBytes method and pass secret key to this method. Now, use builder.services.add authorization method. Now use builder.services.add identity API endpoints method and pass it identity user model and import its library. Inside it, use lambda expression. Inside it, set minimum password length to six. Set require non-alpha numeric to false. Set require digit to false. Set require uppercase to false. Set require lowercase to false. Then use add entity framework stores method and pass it app db context class. And now, use add default token providers method. Now come down here, and use app.map identity API method, and pass it identity user model. With this, our work in program file is complete. Now, inside controllers folder, add a controller. Select API type, and choose API controller with action using entity framework, and click next. Now, select the model class for which you are creating this controller. Also select DB context class, and click add. Our controller is created with all CRUD operations. Now, add authorize annotation here to restrict the access to logged in user only. Now open Package Manager console. Type, add migration, and then type migration's name, I'll name it init. Migration's been created. Now type, update database. And it's done. Let's check the database inside. As you can see our database created, and it contains all identity tables and blogs table too. Now open Postman, and also run this application. All the endpoints of our blogs and identity controllers are available here. First of all, let's register a user. Copy the API address and paste it inside Postman. Also type the register endpoint. 
copy the format and paste it inside JSON body. Type the email and password. Users been added. Let's check it in our database. As you can see, user is added successfully. Now, change the endpoint to login and leave everything else same as register. We logged in successfully and it also gave us the bearer token and refresh token. Copy the bearer token and save it to use later. Now, type blogs endpoints here. Change call type to get. As you can see, it does not authorize us as we did not provide the bearer token. Now, provide the bearer token and make HTTP call again. Now, it has given us the access but return nothing because we have not added any blogs yet. To add blogs, copy its JSON format and paste it here. Remove the ID because it is managed by the server automatically. Make sure to provide token and make call. Something is wrong. We forgot to change the call type to post. Now, make call again. Post is added. Let's check it. It's in the database. Now, clear the body and change call type to get and make call again. As you can see, we have successfully fetched the blog data from the database. If we remove the token and make call, it will restrict our access and return 401 unauthorized error. Now, provide token and pass blog ID as parameter and make call. It has provided us the access and also the blog with the ID. As you can see, it is that simple to set up authentication and authorization in ASP.NET Core Web API. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask in the comments section. With that, this video comes to an end. Thanks for watching.